All right, guys, day two here at Pedro's. Brought my brother Dave along here. We're gonna dive deep into this and see exactly where these rats are coming in underneath that tub. So it's gonna be an exciting one because I'm hearing that this is on a slab foundation. Slab foundation, uh, they've already had a couple other rodent companies. So uh, let me show you, I'll introduce you to Pedro and uh, we'll put a protocol together, all right? So as you can see here, Dave, they're, uh, this is all on a slab here. Yep. And uh, Pedro hired another rodent company. What they've done is they've sealed off, they've sealed off this uh, patio here because they were going into the attic. Right. But what they failed on is there's a clean out here. Let me show you over here. See the big clean out there, that four inch up on the roof? You're talking about the vent pipe, right? Yeah, the vent pipe. They're definitely diving into there because when I got up on the roof, we could smell it like immediately rodent ear. Right. So let me show you over here. So guys, the uh, slab foundation is basically, provides no access underneath the house because it's just a poured concrete slab. So we have no access. It makes it a lot more difficult. You know, typically here in Los Angeles, there's a lot of crawl spaces and attic gives us the ability to really do a thorough inspection of the plumbing. But when we're on a slab, it makes it way more challenging because everything is in concrete or in the dirt. So the other rodent company, what they did was they opened it, uh -huh. but they didn't evaluate further. They just left a couple traps. Oh, so they did put a couple traps underneath the tub. Yeah, with no results. Okay. Over here, what they've done is Pedro's hearing it behind this kitchen wall here. So okay. what I want to what I want to accomplish today, come here. What do I what I want to accomplish today is take this portion of the cabinet out and open up the wall behind directly behind the tub. Because let me show you where the tub is. Oh, I see the drain is on the drains up on the kitchen cabinet side. Yeah, the kitchen's right here. Yeah. So it makes more sense as opposed to ripping the tub out, let's go from the back end, build a containment in the kitchen, pull that out, remove the uh, stove. This okay. is gonna be the best way. Is there any way to not tear out the cabinet? We could just go underneath and open up the wall? It's just hard to work now, because I wanna decontaminate and do all that, David, I'm telling you. Well, that's let's, so go, let's, let's look at that real quick. So let's take a look at these uh, cabinets here. So, let me see the flashlight, Jim. Yeah, Jim, we could, the we could just, take, just take this out right now. No, David, I'm telling and you. And open this up. No, no. Angel, give me a, uh, yeah. No, Why David. not? I don't understand. You can't work inside there. You'll see what I'm talking about. The waste and overflow is below the, the floor level. Okay. And there's a lot of contamination back there. This all needs to be disinfected. Okay. All of this needs to be disinfected. Okay. So what I want to do, uh, is build a critical barrier from the refrigerator, yeah, to across here and work in this area. Okay, so now let me see something here. If the tub valve is on this side, right, and the tub is running this way, yeah, let me show you. Why don't we just open up have along? That, have me that carpet. Why don't we just open up along this wall here to gain access to I'll it. show you, David. I'll show you. Yeah. See that right there? Oh, yeah. And that thing is full of water. Oh, God. Look inside there. Mm-hmm. I don't want to. I think there's enough. See that? So in order to do this properly, we've got to have a better access over there. Okay, but what about, and I don't want to work underneath the sink, underneath the cabinets. It's just going to be challenging. No, I know that. But what if, uh, I mean, if this is, because did, did he file an insurance claim at all? No, but we're, we're going we're gonna to open everything up and then determine that. Okay. We, we, we need to, we need I to open see, so, cause it, it, to, in order to get, in through the penetrate the floor, right. that cabinet's got to be cut. It's got to okay. go. Okay. It's got to go. All right. 
Yeah. Well, we can't really fix it from there, Dave. Well, at least he's right the first time here in about 10 jobs that we've done here. I'm typically the one that, yeah, right. Anyways. That makes the decisions because I have about seven more years of experience than my brother Jimmy, but Boy, that, that is smell. That smells bad. Really bad. We got the G Vision. This is the number one camera yep. in the United States. It's amazing. You guys, I, the, when I first got here, I used the uh, our regular rigid camera with the small monitor. So while the guys are getting set up, uh, I just want to have Dave and I have a second look with this camera. This is a an amazing monitor that we absolutely love, and, uh, and it's so durable too. I mean, yeah, there's just it's just so durable. I mean, if this thing fell off the roof, no it's problem. It's not going to break in pieces. But more importantly, you're going to see while we're out in this bright sun here how you're still able to see an amazing visual of the sewer pipe here. You can't, can't get that technology out of a rigid camera. All right, so my brother's up on the roof. There he is. Look at look at how cool this. Look at how bright that is. And look at we're in direct sunlight, you guys. Look at I'll even put the monitor in the sun here and look at how bright. And the reason why this uh, G Vision um, F3 camera is so vital is that it's really meant to detect any sort of break that you can't really see on a lot of the, the cameras such as rigid. And this is what I love. Look at the details of what this camera can do here. So right now the camera is dropping down into the vent pipe of that bathroom. And what we're looking for is any sort of holes or breaches in the sewer pipe. This pipe right here is uh, cast iron. You can see the rust. The other feature about this camera too, ooh, look at this, look at this. Come back, come back. Keep coming, keep coming. Look at the amount of roots right here. But look at the visual you get from this camera, you guys. Sewer line looks good. Let's, uh, did you, uh, did you find any breaches? Nope. Uh, nope. there is some light root intrusion coming through, but okay. nothing, uh, that rodents are, are I wonder how in. they're getting in by that tub. I don't know. That's why we got to open up that wall and, yeah. and really investigate what's going on there. Okay. All right. So look guys, uh, pretty amazing, David. What's, what's behind this tub? They can tell they've been, Nesting, look at that. Oh, yeah, look at the amount of debris there. And then uh, I'll show you the waste and overflow, Dave. In fact, I'll have Angel. Angel, go to the tub and get ready to run some water. You see where they bit it? Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. See, I didn't think they went up there, Jimmy, because of the. that's an inch and a quarter, inch and a half pipe right there. Oh, yeah. Look at that, you guys. It's like a river right underneath the slab. This is the floor right here. The tub's right here. And look at the amount of water that's been eroding that soil there. It's like a stream. So every time they're using the tub or the shower, that water is just flowing right underneath this slab foundation. Come a little closer. Go, go in, go in. Right there, you can see the hole here. That appears to be the pipe, right? Yeah or a hole in the ground, we're gonna have to open up that kitchen cabinet and get, get down there and see what's going on. But it appears to be, it appears to be the old cast iron pipe that's completely rotted out and that water is just dumping in. So the sewer rats probably coming in, getting through there and then nesting underneath the tub here. Let, Dave, let me show you what behind the kitchen, why, why it's important to open up that wall, watch. Okay, here we go. This is behind, the, go behind the cabinet now. 
So the camera is facing towards the kitchen here. You see anything there? Uh, just some, some debris. That's what I love about this G-Vision camera. Look at the picture quality here. Oh yeah, look at, look at, look at the defecation. Look at how big that rat poop is. It's literally this big. Look at this. Slow down, Jim. Right there, see that? Look at that. So they've been nesting here for a while. That's why, that's why we're getting that stench, that odor. It's just coming right through All right, let me go that tub area. Let me go underneath the tub. Oh yeah, right there, stop. Okay, now pull back, pull back. Look at all the urine, you guys. This is all urine stains. Okay, go in now, go in slow. And look at the amount of defecation. Look at that. Okay, I can't wait to see what's going on underneath that, that ground there once we uh, gain access into the kitchen. This really all needs to be cleaned up. This is what, this is what brings rats in. Look at how close, see here? You can tell Pedro's been feeding them the poison. See the rat feces there? So maintaining behind kitchens and, and um, underneath dishwashers, refrigerators, and cooktops, really important because a lot of people don't realize they're, they're uh, sweeping their floors and all of that debris gets shoved in behind here and all of this sort of collects. So always a good idea to check underneath your appliances. Guys, this is super, super disgusting. This is one of the biggest rat nests I've ever seen. That's why I recommended to David we needed to open up this kitchen cabinet because I knew something was going behind this tub. Amazing, check this out. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and get all this cleaned up, sanitized, and then we're gonna go ahead and cut this wall here to get access behind the tub. Um, that'll really give us, I think that tub actually is over there, so we're going to cut this entire wall out right here. Alright, so uh, let's start that process now. So we've got everything vacuumed, HEPA vac cleaned, wiped down. We're gonna go ahead and sanitize. We do see some visible black mold, so we're gonna use the, the twin uh, mold cleanup here, which is really gonna soak into the substrates and get rid of that black mold. And this is our enzyme treatment, which is a fogger. It's gonna sanitize, so it's able to work in a, in a very clean environment. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead now and open this wall up. And this is where it gets interesting. Yeah, I found another nest. Oh, really? Where? Yeah, it's right over here on this side behind the vanity. All right, let's get the guys to come back in and open up. Yeah, they're traveling through here, so we definitely need to open this up. Okay. Wow. Yeah, we're going to need the rapid mold removal agent, too. And there's a little bit of mold down here. Where? Down below, see it? Oh yeah. Okay, I'll get a spray bottle ready and... Okay. Uh, Thompson, why don't we, uh, let's get this opened up here. Okay. And then uh, let's vacuum and clean and then we'll start focusing on the... Whew! Man. Okay. okay. Is, los ratones viene abajo y... Uh, ellos comer la plástico de la pipa yeah. y mucho agua abajo. Oh. Está saliendo abajo de la, de la concreto. We need to practice our Spanish a little bit more. Dave speaks a little bit better than I do. Well, it's because I'm 
I'm married to a Latina, so I've got that little bit more of a better pronunciation. That, yeah, he's got that rolling of the tongue, like um, uh, chili relleno. Chili relleno. Uh, burrito. Burrito. Tacos. Tacos, carne, chile. <laughs> Cosas que, que quieres comer. La favorito comida es... Chili relleno. Chili relleno es mi favorito. Tiene salsa encima con crema. Una tortilla de, de, uh, de, maíz. de maíz y una chili toreado. Uh, chili toreado. Buenísimo, buenísimo. So guys, I just want to take a moment here while the guys are opening up the walls. These are the moments right here where we get excited because you never know what you're going to find. I mean, we know that the rats chewed through the drain pipe and causing a river underneath the slab but yeah it's always gonna be the yeah. most rewarding when you get your hands right to it so i hope I, one day i hope you guys to give you guys a visual of the rats actually inside Ooh, the sewer line so we cool. get the g-vision camera in there and we, we go face it. to face with a rat that's that's gonna happen soon i think one day oh yeah sure. absolutely <laughs> all right another couple of minutes we'll be back in there See what we find. <laughs> so we're getting the new waste and overflow ready to go. That's a great uh, competitive advantage over the other rodent companies that we obviously have a plumbing license and with the aggressiveness that the roots or the rats are getting inside the, the um, sewer system, it gives us the ability to address both, repair their plumbing, cameras, location devices, cut out the drain pipes, replace it with uh, top quality materials. So very fortunate with that. All right, so while they're digging, we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove the waste and overflow uh, trim pieces here. So that way uh, we can remove all of those old chewed up pipes and replace this with all new pieces here. All right, so I have to use a little channel lock hack to get this drain out of here. They do make a really cool tool that'll drop down. It's a spud wrench, but I don't have that with me. So instead of uh, waiting for it, we're just gonna go ahead and use the channel locks and see if we can get this, this out here. And it just completely broke off. It's so weak. We may need to get a, just an ABS glue coupling and then I can just put everything away. But I gotta take, let's clean this up here real quick. Put a new piece of paper and then let's, I know what to do here. Yeah, see that right there, Jim? Yeah. I'll just cut, I'll cut underneath that spud there. Okay. And then we can just remove it. And then, oh, uh, I see. you know what I mean? How are we going to tighten up the new spot? Channel locks? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Look at that, guys. Look at those chew marks. Unbelievable. Really have much access to work here. It's a small hole here that's about... 10 inches, so I gotta try to find the right size channel locks. It'll go around this slip nut here. Daddies. That's uh, threaded. Looks like it's glued, Dave. Look like it's glued. Woo. 
All right, we got the old drain out. We're ready to put in our brand new drain here. So, um, and uh, no, no, I need the, yeah, we need the glue. Um, let's get, let's get, um, where's the rest of that drain pipe? Okay. This is what it's gonna look like, you guys, when it's all done brand new so what we'll do is anytime you're installing a waste and overflow and you don't have access you always want to use ABS all glue fittings once you glue it and you do it right you're never gonna have a leak again this one here was slip nuts and those tend to vibrate loose more vulnerability to leakage so always recommend going with an all ABS uh, drain system putting glue inside the hub here all right okay let me have it and that's about center perfect make it nice and pretty for the okay guys we got it all right, so we got the new drain put in. Ah. Now we're gonna run water, make sure that this drain's not leaking. We should be good to go. So far, so good. Okay, Pedro, so these are the pipes that we replaced underneath your tub. You can see where they chewed them up. And look at the backside here. This was actually the drain. Yeah. So water was just dumping out underneath the tub. Yeah. That was just a little hole. Right? No, look at it. They were really having a field day on that. And you can see that the piping's real thin. Yeah. So what we did is we upgraded it to ABS, which is a thicker grade piping. There's no slip junk joints or any vulnerability because it's all glue. So you're going to have a a permanent solution there That's good. and then you can see that we replaced the the trim pieces too yeah all right thank you you're welcome That's good. isn't that amazing what they've done the things they do man just to have a little taste of water right yeah they were they were loving loving their little home underneath your tub a lagoon right there but we you had also had a lot of uh a rat defecation at the back of the tub. Mm -hmm. So we went ahead and, and vacuumed all that out and then all we right. sanitized right, like three you. times the inside of the, the tub area yeah. and did a really good disinfecting. All so, right. okay? Yeah, thank you. All right, you you want these or should I just throw them away? Souvenirs. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Pedro, so we're using RAM board. We, um, like I said earlier, I really want to leave this wall open at least for the next four to five days. We're going to close it up like that. But we want to come back and check in the next three to four days. Just make sure you'll shoot me a text if there's any noise whatsoever. Um, but um, we highly recommend just leaving it like that. Don't have your, your you said it was your nephew or your cousin or somebody. My cousin works in drywall. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, I'll come nope. and do it. Don't worry about that. I appreciate that. Yeah. So we don't want to have. Whoops. We don't want to have. Um, we don't want to cover the walls right away. Yeah. Okay. Just in case there's a little bit of activity left. A lot of times when we're working in these spaces, the rodents will run off to another area and hide for that uh, duration. So let's really monitor it for the next couple of days at least. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll keep an eye out. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you. All right. So here's what we use: uh, stainless steel clamps. So wiring like this, tighten over it, and uh, tighten away. This does a really good job because it doesn't rust, and these don't fly away. A lot of guys use uh, silicone, which is okay, but again, with all the elements, this seems to be the one that holds up the best here with the stainless steel clamp. All right, guys, well, this is the final step. Pedro and his father are going to go ahead and hire another contractor to um, finish out the drywall patching and put the cabinet back. Uh, we recommended to them to leave that wall open for at least the next five to seven days just to make sure that uh, there's no more activity. 
So uh, good job today, buddy. Yeah, it was a great, great video. Hey guys, please leave your comments. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and we'll, we'll see, see you on the next one. one.